Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, June 30, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We have a lot of stuff on the docket. In fact, we have a lot of really great stuff on the docket. So you're going to want to stay tuned. You're going to want to make available your sticky notes. We'll go over the bull and the bear case, and we'll learn a number of things along the way. There's going to be a lot of hidden messages, not on purpose. Sometimes you just have to read between the lines. So pay attention in this video. I'm teaching you a lot of stuff, whether you like it or not. We'll start with the assessment from the big picture perspective, the daily chart, nothing's changed, the trend is the same, so be it. Last night, we talked about 374.65. What I said was, and you can go back to check the videotape, I was a buyer down in that neck of the woods. This is a futures chart, it's an hourly chart, and here's what I want to point out. This is what I was looking at last night. I'm looking at a bearish pattern, I'm watching this thing start to break down, and as soon as it did, I started saying to myself, and also starting to compose the email that was going to go out to lazy swing traders in the morning, they're going to get the 374.65. The only question was, was it going to be the thieves in the night, and then they bounce away by the opening bell, not giving you the opportunity to trade it in either direction? Or were they actually going to do the deed during the regular business hours? They did the deed. So let's just start out by going over a couple of things because it sets the table for the rest of the video, the rest of the day, and beyond. First order of business, this was sent out at 9.28 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It was basically written hours before that. We've got one on our hands. It's the It's Time Trade. I'm a buyer of SPY options using the 376 strike price July 15 expiration. I'm putting the trade on anywhere in the zone 374.65 to 375. Pennies in the big scheme of things won't matter. Traders can use any vehicle they like. It's a directional trade that says we should bounce. I will be looking for one of those 120 plus handle s p rallies here's a snippet from inside the numbers we're going to circle back to this later keep in mind there's a method to the madness i'm setting up for something that i want to describe so that you learn going forward i'm expecting to see a test of 374.65 during the session i'm a buyer down there this morning this is at 9:17 before the opening bell my point is and this is 9:32. I'm a buyer at 374.65, give or take. If they go lower, remember, there's a couple of other numbers. 372 and a quarter, write that down. Just for kicks, low of day was 372.56. Not bad for a rookie. We'll get back to more inside the numbers in a moment. Here's the point that I want to make. Last night and before that, I talked about 374.65. I'm waiting for a number. I explained in detail a number of times why that area was important. As you can see now, I was essentially pounding the table on that number on that trade. Lazy swing traders got it. Inside the number members got it. A lot of traders participated in the nice rocket ride away from that number. Now look, they made a high of 380.66 in today's session. They didn't get us our 120 handles yet, but this was day one, and lazy swing trader members already hit first profit target, which was 380.35. And what was today's high? 380.66. There are no accidents or coincidences. First profit off the table. It is now officially a risk free, emotionless trade. Now, let's reiterate some of the possibilities that we talked about last night and before. So now we have a pretty clear picture. They're either doing one of these things, A leg up, this is a corrective pattern in a downtrend, B leg down, and C leg will complete at minimum over the high of the A leg. We've gone over this thousands of times because this kind of thing plays out thousands of times. 
you have one here. We had a low. We talked about it. They're going to make defense against that low. They did that. It happens over and over and over again. It's just nobody believes it when you're in the heat of the moment. If you look at the chart for just a chart without the money attached to it, you can think more clearly. What about the flip side? What happens if it's a collapse? Well, it can be. What if we wake up tomorrow on Friday and they're trading a lot lower? Well, then they're going to go back and test the 365 or lower. It's not off the table. The confidence lied in the fact that they were going to find support and bounce away from 374, 65, and we'll call it a give or take. It's a big spot. And you'll see in the notes when we go over it, I said it could take some time. It took a little time. Once they got going, they went on a rocket ride. Do I expect a rally into next week? The answer is, yes, I do. Do I have the awareness that A, that could be wrong, and B, the market could collapse tomorrow? And the answer is, yes. I'm telling you what my expectations are. I have a full and complete awareness of both sides of the tape. Let's go over inside the numbers so that you have a good idea of what the thought process is beginning at zero dark 30. Happy Thursday, wake up red. They've already paid a visit to the number we spoke about last night, 374.65. Let's get down to the business of the numbers. We'll start with that exact number. That is our early pivot. Getting below and staying below opens the door for some lower stuff. 374, which is close by, and 372 and a quarter before the door swings open for 370. They didn't get back down there, but it was straightforward. Remember the number that was not reached yesterday, 378. The price action was telling us the destination was lower. Well, any rescue operation will have to begin by recapturing 378. So here we are back on a five minute chart, you know the drill right of the vertical, today's activity. 378 is the middle line, you can see. A, it was important, we know that, because price ran up to it and was rejected. Not all by that much, but it was rejected, at least from a short term basis. They came back to run a test, went back up to run another test of the previous high just made earlier, and then you can see how they traded in a range between the high of day, give or take, the 378. Once they gave up 378, they started coming back down only to recapture it or at least try to recapture it by the end of the day. So you can see the importance of these numbers. A, we had an exit target within pennies on the swing trade. For the first private target, there are two more listed on the board. This is not a one day trade even though it only took one day to get the first target. And here we go. If they can work back up there, it will be overhead resistance. After that, they would be headed to the big fat run number of 380 and yesterday's close, which is slightly higher. What did they do? They did exactly everything we laid out at zero dark 30 in both directions. Who does that? Let's see what else we have as the day gets underway. Little bit of a Macarena this morning around the economic release at 8.30, the data, the numbers, they're all half phony anyway, but the market reacts to them no matter what they are. But we were looking for 374.65, you know the drill. I'm going to scroll up. You know exactly what happened. We talked about it. You saw the trades. Read the notes. Go back to the chart to double check the work. 10.31, no change. Taking a little bit of time but we were prepared for that. And then they finally got going just a few minutes later, and the rest is history. So again, read the notes. If you're at all interested to trade or are already trading in the SPY or a like vehicle, the S&P 500, during the trading day or anything else, these notes, this information is your tour guide. I'm giving real numbers each and every day. Stocks on the move. Let's check out the two on the board this morning that did hit their numbers. The other four did not. Remember, we're in the donut hole. Earnings season will start in a couple of weeks. They're going to come fast and furious, and not only will we get one or two hitting their numbers out of six or seven, we'll get five or six or seven hitting their numbers out of seven, eight, or nine. That's just the way it works. We'll look at the charts of Square and FCX. 
FCX, pretty straightforward, haircut at the open, came up short, had a rip higher away from it, came back on a secondary test of 29.25, they did the deal, they did it again, and they came back to it again. So we know the number's important, they did what I call the Macarena in front of the number, they came close, they went away, they came back to it, so it's not the ideal trade in the manner in which, but the takeaway is, the numbers work, you got it. Here's the chart of Square, better known as Block. Kind of funny when the company changes their name to Block to signify that they're in the crypto space or the blockchain space, and they did it. You could probably check back on this. I won't be off by too much. They did it pretty much at the top of the crypto market. Funny how that works. Here, pretty self-explanatory. The numbers work. They came up short of the second number. So if you bought the first, you held it. They never got the second hit, so you held the first. They did the thing later on, minimum required base hit, base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. It's not a blockbuster trade. The SPY was a blockbuster trade. There's something for everybody. By the way, I needed to make mention and I forgot before, back to the S&P 500. Look at this volume in the last hourly candle of the day. This is rebalancing, end of quarter rebalancing. So whatever happened in the last hour of the day, whether the market was up or down, you have to take it with a grain of salt. There was a lot of rebalancing, whipsaw, volume, all kinds of stuff going on. Can't prove one way or the other exactly what was going on. So you just let it go, and we just come back tomorrow and do the same thing all over again. And by the way, since we're back on this chart, I'll make mention one more time. If a trader is an Inside the Number member, or Lazy Swing Trader member, or watch these videos at night, or all three or two out of the three, then you knew I was pounding the table on that number, and if you didn't hear me pound the table on that number, you must be in a cone of silence. IWM, same routine, all the same market, they went up and filled their gap today, they got the bounce all at the same time. It's either an A, B, C, or it's just an A and a B all the way down like this. We won't know until we know. I'm looking for upside into next week. If I'm wrong, they're gonna be down visiting the lows tomorrow and Tuesday. And that same routine goes for the SPY, the Qs, all that stuff. It's all the same market. Folks down at the transportation department, now check this out. They came all the way down this morning, but look where they fought back to close back above. How about the breakup candle low? We talked about that last night, they spiked it. They filled this little gap down here, they reversed back and closed back above it. So technically, forget about the fact that they're all the way down here on the chart, at a low, from all the way up there. Forget that for a moment, and just look at this scenario here, only this picture, and say, what happens more often than not? Does this fail down here, or do they move up in the northern direction off of a consolidation, a pullback, a test, whatever you want to call it, of a breakup candle low. What normally happens is they go back up in the other direction, forget about the trend for a moment, forget about what's going on, forget about the news cycle, just look at that piece on the chart and say, yeah, the probabilities are they're going to try and work their way back up. Doesn't mean it will, but the probabilities are. This is a probability-based business. The Qs, same routine, same thing with the ABC routine pattern, whatever you want to call it, A, B, C, or we could be looking at A and a B into the abyss. Are they going to kill the tape into the Independence Day holiday weekend? Anything's possible. Expect the unexpected. XLF, they ran a test of the 31, bounced back off of it, filled the gap back above, same chart as everything else, same breakup candle as the transport chart, same routine. If everything's going to go down, the XLF is going to be at new lows in short order. Now, here's the flip side of things. Smash Mouth ran a test of the former low from a couple of weeks ago. They bounced off of it, closed above, but let's keep in mind where they are from a big picture perspective. They're at the lows. Now, they can certainly bounce up. Here's your weekly chart, but remember we talked about it last night. If they're doing this, they're ultimately going to come back down to at least, if not more, of the 200 period moving average. 
doesn't mean they won't turn around and fill the gap up here. We don't know from day to day, but looking at the big picture, we have what we have, and the data or data, however you want to say it on the chart, says they just ran a test of the recently made low, so there's nothing bullish on this chart. And you have to separate. There's nothing bullish on this chart, period. From, there's nothing bullish on this chart, doesn't mean they can't bounce up for two or three or four or five days. That's not going to change the trend. It's just a bounce and a downtrend. Bounces and downtrends, they're trading opportunities. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. It's everything I wanted to discuss tonight. I think everybody gets the point. Sometimes I pound the table, and rightfully so. Sometimes I'll pound the table and be wrong. This time it wasn't wrong. It was right. But here's something else I want to mention. Throwing this in at the 11th hour for those of you left who haven't already X'd out of the video. There haven't been a lot of swing trades lately. Why is that? Because I wasn't comfortable taking on a new position. I was waiting for something juicy. I was waiting for them to get to a place that I'm waiting for. That's usually a recipe for a trade. Now, I know many traders just want trades. They don't even care if they win or not. They just want a volume of trades. I'm not playing to that party. I'm not playing to that group of people. Traders canceled. You don't put out enough trades. Guess what? Guess which one they missed. You got it. They missed today's trade because they canceled three days ago because they didn't put out enough trades. I'm going to do it my way, and the swing trading account will be managed just fine through the bear market and back into bull markets. In a bear market, you can't just throw darts and put out trade alerts. That's a recipe to lose. I'm going to do it my way, and those of you that understand how this works will stick around. The trades will ebb and flow. Sometimes there'll be many more coming out on a more frequent basis. Other times when things are less clear or murky, I'm not going to put out a trade alert just to put out a trade alert. There, I said my piece. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.